let's go ahead and learn exactly what PostgreSQL means. So Postgres is the actual database engine and then SQL is the actual structured query language. So this structured query language allows us to work with databases. So basically interact with it. So SQL is a programming language that allows us to have commands like this. So select where select is the actual uh, SQL command. And then we have to specify some columns, right? And then from and also from is a reserve keyword for SQL and then the actual table name. So SQL allows us to manage data in a relational database, essentially, and it's very easy to learn. So you saw that the syntax is simply select columns and then from and then the actual table or tables. And being easy, it doesn't mean that you can't do, you know, much with it. In contrast, it's very, very powerful. And it's been around for, um, you know, quite some time now, since 1974, and it's very widely used all over the Internet. So it's a very essential programming language for anyone getting into programming. So the question that you might have is how this data is actually stored. So data is stored in tables, and these tables are formed by two things. It's formed by columns and rows, right? So it's just a regular table. And you might have a table, for example, called person, and you might find the columns, so the attributes of a person as columns, right? So these are the columns. So a person might have an ID, first name, last name, gender, and age. And then the actual rows is the actual data inside of that table. So you can see that I've got um, uh, Anne Smith, so she's a female, age 44. Then you can have another row, Jake Jones, so on and so forth. So you can see that we have some rows and some columns. So I've mentioned that SQL allows us to manage data in a relational database. So what a relational database is, it's simply a relation between one or more tables, right? So this is how data might be structured inside of a relational database. So you might have a table called person, and also you might have a table called car, and basically these two tables, they have a relationship between them. So a person may or may not have a car. So you can see, for example, Anne Smith, she doesn't have a car. So the car underscore ID column is blank. But if you look at Jake and Julia, they have a corresponding car that points to the car table. And this is what a relationship is made of. And don't worry, we're going to cover lots of this throughout this course. But so that you are aware, a relational database is when two or more tables have some kind of relationship between them. Because usually, you know, in these databases, you have lots of information to store, right? And what you don't want to do is actually have unstructured tables where you pretty much have a table that stores everything and then it makes it very difficult to manage, to query, and perform other operations. So what you would do is actually split, um, you know, your information into tables and then have some kind of relationship between them.